Welcome back. Uh, this video is about data types and variables, the fundamental building blocks of how any C++ program is going to need to work. Uh, so let's follow along as we go through some exercises demonstrating what are the kinds of variables and data types that we have to work with. So in our first exercise, we're going to write some expressions and run them in Jupyter. Uh, I'm going to copy all the text here for my own sake. Uh, let's go to our next little folder, which is going to be data types and variables. And let's make a new notebook, which is going to be also exercise one. Okay, now to remind myself what we're doing, I'm just gonna go slash star star slash, and inside of these two, I'm going to write in the exercise. Uh, and so this is a comment. This isn't actually code. The computer's not gonna actually write uh, do anything with this. It's just a text to remind me what are we working on right now. So we're going to write some expressions and run them in Jupyter. Any number. Uh, I happen to like pi. So let's write out pi. Uh, and it turns out you can only write pi so far before the computer actually runs out of memory to store all the digits that are in it. And uh, Jupyter in this case is only really able to go up this far before it sort of says, eh, you don't need more memory than that. Um, so here is our value of pi. Let's get a sentence in double quotes. Uh, I am Michael. That is a sentence. Hooray. Uh, any expression with two mathematical operators. So let's say uh, 3 plus 5 minus 10. It's negative 2, which adds up. The example of pem, pedma, yeah, bed mass or PEMDAS. So this is the idea that we can, for instance, put a, say, 2 times... 3 plus 5, which will give us 16 because we do the uh, operation in the parentheses first and then multiply it by 2 after. Uh, and then an expression that has an error, we, there's all kinds of different ways you can do this one, um, but perhaps you want to do something like 1 plus plus 2, uh, which doesn't make any sense because uh, the computer doesn't understand what you mean by plus plus uh, with a number right after it. This is kind of confusing to it. Uh, so we see in here an error expression is not assignable, and that basically is because it sees that you're trying to um, run plus plus on this one. Basically, um, plus plus will see later actually means something in C plus plus. The name might give you a hint there. Um, but when it runs into that, this is you know kind of gibberish. And so the computer just kind of gives up and says, hey, I'm not going to do anything. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, we'll see lots of errors over the course of this uh, semester. Um, but we're also going to take a very close look at what these messages are telling us and maybe see if we can gain some insights about how to fix things. Uh, but in this case, you can probably guess exactly how to fix this. So I won't do that for you. Uh, you can maybe try it yourself. OK, on to the next exercise. Initialize some different types of variables with some values other than the ones from the slides. Figure out which ones we can add together and which ones we cannot. So a new notebook, C++, exercise two. Okay, initialize five different types of variables. So we have integers. So this can be a number, uh, like say 10. We can have a character. So let's say ampersand, here is an ampersand. I put it in single quotes because it's a single character. And notice now I'm also putting in semicolons here. These semicolons indicate that these are statements. I'm telling the computer, store the number 10 in the variable called number. Store this symbol over here in the variable called ampersand, uh, and so on and so forth. And these are um, not going to be necessarily evaluated. Um, I guess technically they are, but the computer is going to run each of these in sequence from top to bottom. Uh, and with each one, it's going to store this data into the places I'm asking it to. We can do a floating point number like pi, 3.14159. We can have a Boolean, which is for, uh, or sorry, bool, which is a Boolean value. Let's say raining is false because when I look outside, it's not raining right now. Um, and last but not least, let's do a, uh, how about a short? And so a short um, is a type of, it's sort of like an integer, except it can't take as big values as an integer can. And we'll store, you know, let's say 1,000 in it. Okay, now, can I add these together? Let's see. What if I do number plus ampersand? 48, well, where the heck does that come from? 
turns out that everything we see here in the computer is represented as a value, a numerical value. The computer only operates on zeros and ones, but if you combine zeros and ones in certain ways, you can represent more abstract, larger things. Um, and in this case, the computer, despite only knowing zeros and ones, certainly knows what a 10 is, and it decides that this symbol here actually represents 38 in the computer. So it adds um, 10 and 38 together to get 48. And you know, to, to check this, how about we add it to value? And maybe you can take a guess. What do you think will happen if we do value plus ampersand? Think about it for a second. And then, is this what you thought? Hopefully so. Um, so we can add number and ampersand together. We, that means an uh, integer and a character can be combined. We can add a short and a character. How about a float and a Boolean? Uh, it actually just gave us the same thing. Uh, put an F here to indicate it's a floating point number. This F doesn't mean false, it just means floating point. Because if I do pi plus number, it also gives me that F, 13, um, with an F at the end. Uh, but what this tells us is that false is actually just equal to zero. And I can double check this by asking the computer, hey, is false equal to zero? And it says, yes, true, it is. Um, in the computer, it represents false as zero and every and it represents true as one. However, everything else other than zero is considered to be true. Something is either true or it's false. There's no other options. Um, so what the computer has decided is that any time it sees zero, that just means false. And if it sees anything else, it says, okay, that's true. But if you ask the computer, give me the numerical value of true, it will just say one. And I can check this by doing something like Boolean um, good weather <laughs> equals true. And I can do good weather plus number will give me 11. 10 plus one is 11. Uh, and so you can go through the other pairs, but it turns out you can actually add all of these together. Try them out uh, and then uh, move on to the next part of this video. So the next part is printf. So printf here is where we're going to be able to write out a, a little longer of a message. Let's make a new notebook, 11. Here's our instructions. Uh, create some variables, um, two that are characters, uh, one that's an integer, one that's a double, and write a print statement that will uh, print out the following. Uh, how do I close this? Uh, I always forget how to, um, it's been a while since I've tinkered around with Jupiter, so I'm trying to remember how to, uh, control B, there we go. Just making ourselves have a little bit more uh, space on the screen. Okay. Four variables. Then we'll write a print statement that shows the following. My initials are the first character and the second character. I'm int years old and my high school average was double. Now, I could, if I wanted, write some gibberish like this. Character something equals A. But here's where we get into something that's not required for things to work, but more so required for you know, professional purposes, which is code styling. This is a terrible variable name because no one is gonna remember this. It's like impossible to remember this exact combination of characters and it has no meaning. When we see this, it doesn't tell us anything. So variable names like you know X, uh, Q, just random letters um, or gibberish, all don't tell us what this variable is actually intended for. And what the first character is intended for is my first initial. So I should call it, you know, first in it, first initial, something like that. And now I remember, oh, that's what the purpose of this variable is. And I'll do the same thing with the second initial, call it second initial, let's say B. Uh, if you're wondering how I was able to copy this code so quickly without even um, using my mouse, um, if you're, you can use home and end to jump between the beginning of the line and the end of the line. Shift home will select all the text, control C to copy it, go right, enter to go down, control V to copy it again. And this might be something I do pretty quickly without really talking about it over the course of the semester. Control Z to undo, um, just in order to get some of the text out a little faster. So I got two initials. I need a integer that represents how many years old I am, which is the age, so age 34. Uh, and my high school average was double. And so this is a double or floating point. They basically mean the same thing. Um, and this will be the average, which let's say we have a nice 85.5, why not? So now I have my variables and now I need a print statement that will print out this message. 
here's my message. And now there's already a problem just doing it as it is before I fill in the blanks, which is that it says there's an incomplete format specifier. Uh, and it's not quite able to tell me where it is, but I happen to know that it's right here. So format specifiers for print statements use this percent symbol to indicate what type of thing you want to actually be printing out. And right now I didn't actually, I gave it percent um, dot, which means nothing. So I'm gonna delete this for now. And we can see, okay, um, we have the general sentence, but we need to fill in these blanks here. We need to replace these tags with the actual variables. Uh, and so this is where these format specifiers come in. I want a character, which is a percent %c, another character, percent %c, an integer, otherwise known as a decimal number, which is percent %d, and a double, also known as a float, percent %f. And if you're wondering how I know all these, it's because I memorized them, um, but you can always look them up. So you can look at you know, C++ format specifiers, and this little table on the very first result will show you all the different ones that are available to you. Now, when I put in the format specifiers, this means substitute them for the actual variables, but I need to tell what variables we're talking about. So I'm gonna add a comma and then say, I want the first initial, I want the second initial, I want the age, and I want the average. This is all the variables in order. And now look at that, we've got all of the parts of the message in there, except we're missing one thing, which was that percent sign that I got rid of. And I can't just put a percent here because once again, we see that error happens. So what do we do? Well, it turns out the table actually had the answer, which is at the very bottom, a percent sign followed by another percent sign will write a single percent. So the solution is to simply go here and put two percent signs instead. And now I have my message. Hooray, that's it. Space it a little bit so it looks a little nicer. There we go, there's our message. Okay, uh, that was exercise three. And now we'll move on to the last one. So exercise four. Go back here. Final one, type casting. So write a cell that initializes the character, then outputs the integer value of that character, then write a cell that demonstrates the difference between integer division and floating point division. So if I go and, oh, where did this get saved? I have my uh, exercise three. Oh, it just wasn't showing up here. Okay, there it is. All right, exercise four. Here's what we have to do. Right, initialize a character. So let's say we're going to make our character. We'll do ampersand again. This is ampersand. Write a cell that um, outputs the initial, the, the integer value of that character. So um, if we use printf to print out a character of the ampersand, uh, oop, what did I mess up? Uh, Mm -hmm. No matching called a printf. It's very strange. I think if I do this on a separate line, it should be okay. Ampersand. Uh, oh no, what did I mess up? Multi character. No matching called a printf. Very strange error. I haven't seen that before. Oh, I understand why. <laughs> Maybe someone else uh, has spotted it already, but um, multi character. Uh, character constant sounds like gibberish, but what's actually happening here is that the computer wants to see double quotations. That's why it's messing up. All right, it took me a little second to realize why there was a problem, but there we have it. Okay, but I don't want the ampersand, I want the integer value of that character. And it turns out all I have to do is change the format specifier from a character to a number and to see that ampersand is 38. The thing that we saw in the earlier exercise, but now we can just directly see it right in front of us. Now, we want to demonstrate the difference between integer division and floating point division in C++. This is pretty easy. If I do five over two, what do you think this is? You would say if you're a mathematician, well, it's um, either five over two, just as it is, or maybe 2.5. If you're probably an engineer, I think would say 2.5. Uh, and the computer will say, no, you're both wrong, it's two. <laughs> uh, why on earth is that the case? And the answer is because these are both integers. And so the computer says, okay, if you're going to do this operation on integers, I need to give you an integer answer. And 2.5 is not an integer. So it will truncate 2.5, just cut off the decimal and say, all that you have left is two. 
you may not want it to do this. In order to get it to not do that, you need to convert one of these into a floating point number. And it's pretty simple to do that, uh, which is to simply write uh, five over 2.0. And there we have it. Um, so anytime that you are doing division, make sure to double check what types you're working with, because if you are working with integers, then you will not be able to um, get the decimal points in case you actually care about those. You need to make sure one of the values you're working with is a um, floating point value. Uh, and just to have this all nicely packed in a single cell, let's do printf um, percent %d, which is five over two, and another one, which is percent %f, which is 5.0 over two. Uh, oh, and we'll, um, we'll space these out as well. Uh, to add a new line between them, you can use slash n, and slash n will just basically put a space in between your, your uh, uh, things you're typing out. And there we go. So here is our integer division. Here is our floating point division. We can see even though 5 and 5.0 are the same, um, because the types are different, it will give us different results. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.